Well, good morning, everybody. Is everybody awake and, and having having coffee? Good morning. Coffee. Good morning, Adam. It's great. It's like, like a school class, you know. Um, all right. So, um, like Judy mentioned, uh, the goal what we what we put together uh, last October was uh, 48 and 48. The idea was to create 48 websites for 48 nonprofits in 48 hours. In this talk, I'll kind of be covering sort of what we learned from that what we can take away from it, hopefully some useful things that you can use with clients and, and other folks as you use WordPress. So um, I guess really, and this is all my information by the way also, so I've got too many Twitter handles on here. You can follow 4848 or me or my company, Sideways8, I'm the co-founder of 4848, also the co-founder of Sideways8. Uh, Sideways8 is a digital marketing agency here in Atlanta. 4848, of course, is a nonprofit organization to run our events and expand nationally. <coughs> Uh, you can see also my personal blog up there. I blog about productivity mostly um, and habit building and anything else that I really want to blog about. But mostly productivity and habit building. Really check that out. So, okay. So the first thing is, what's 40 and 48? And why did we do it? Why would we be insane enough to try to build 48 websites in 48 hours? Um, that's a good question. So it came out of the, the, it was the brainchild of my friend Jeff Hillemeyer, who's uh, well known in the tech community here in Atlanta, and he basically came to me and he said, hey, um, you know, what if we could you know, build a, a website or a couple of websites in a weekend for a nonprofit? I said, yeah, we can do that. And then he said, so what if we did like 20 websites for 20 nonprofits? So, yeah, we can do that. What if we did 50 websites in a weekend for 50 nonprofits? Yeah, we could do that. Okay, how about 48 and 48, because that sounds better from a marketing perspective. <laughs> Done. So we basically came up with the idea and had absolutely no concept if we could do it or not. We just figured it out as we went along. Um, the, but really, the question is why do it, right? Why try to accomplish this? And, and really, it's a simple goal. It's that most of us that work with WordPress, most of us that do uh, digital marketing, we're professionals in that space. And nonprofits tend to look really bad, right? I mean, if you go to a nonprofit website, if you look at nonprofit brands, they just aren't. Great. And so we had this idea and this concept that we could take 48, or we could take roughly 150 digital professionals that really know their stuff, that really know brands, that really know websites, that really know storytelling online, and we could connect them with nonprofits and enable them to help those nonprofits. <coughs> So that was kind of the, the why behind we did it. Because any, it's, it's great to go drive a car for Meals on Wheels. It's great to go pack a box of food. And those are important ways to volunteer for, for nonprofits. But it's, there, a lot of people can do those things. Very few people can tell the story online. And so we wanted to get those people concentrated in a room telling website stories. So let's see. Why give back is the, is the next question. So. That's what 48 and 48 is. Why get it back, right? Why would volunteers spend 48 hours doing this? There's a couple of reasons. Some selfish, most not selfish. The first reason we get back is because we should, right? We have the ability. We have a weekend. We have time. Why not dedicate a weekend to give it back? Right? There's nothing wrong with that, right? It makes us feel good. It helps people. Can you speak louder, please? Can I speak louder? Absolutely, I can speak louder. So we give back, it helps us feel good, it helps the nonprofits, it helps the community that we love and live in, which is Atlanta and Metro Atlanta. It also helps us connect to other professionals that are in our space, which also makes us better. I can't tell you how many people I've met at 48 and 48 that I've been able to connect with afterwards, that I've been able to learn from, that I've been able to grow with. I mean, it's kind of like hanging out here. You come here, you meet people, you connect, you learn, you grow and you're able to give back together. And that's kind of what we do at WordCamp with the Word, 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 WordPress community. That's what we do at 48 and 48 when we're trying to build websites and build things for nonprofits. And so we give back for that. We also give back because it's good networking, so ultimately it probably helps your business. So it doesn't hurt to give back. I've found that volunteering in nonprofits doesn't hurt my business, generally speaking. That's not to say that that's the only reason I do it. In fact, it's not at all the reason I do it. But it's a nice side note. I'm not going to lie. Try not to do that. Um, and it helps your business to grow through doing that show. Right? So that's the bottom line. Next question is how do we build 
48 websites in 48 hours. That's what everybody wants to know. How did you do it? So that's an interesting, that was an interesting process. It started off with me saying, because see, listen, Sideways 8, our digital agency, we're passionate about custom website design, custom development. That's what we do. We do design custom in Photoshop. We build custom themes. We build custom plugins. We like custom. And so when we first started with this idea, it's like, hey, let's build 48 custom sites. We'll have this amount of time to design them, this amount of time to develop them, no time to quality assurance test them at all, and then we'll just ship them out the door. That would be great, right? That's a good idea. And I sat down with a couple of people, uh, one in particular in the back of the room, Mr. Cliff Seal, and, and he, he said, yeah, that's not going to work at all. <laughs> I completely ignored him and continued on my track, because that's what you do when you get advice, you ignore it, and you continue doing what you do. And more conversations, more, no, that's not going to work, you can't do it that way, more ignoring, about, you know, multiple, uh, three or four or five. And eventually, um, I came around to, to close way of thinking and decided that we needed a platform to build this stuff on because building it without a platform was a really, really bad idea. So uh, we ended up going with Cliff's platform which is based, it's a closed platform based on, basically it's a, it's a curated WordPress environment that has really, really solid themes, really solid plugins that are all vetted, that are all work together well, and it's perfectly and totally maintained. So that I knew we could build on it, I knew the code was rock solid, I knew that if the nonprofit stayed on their platform, that they would be safe and secure and not hacked, and they would be really, really, really well supported. So that service, in case you didn't know, is called Evermore. Uh, I told them that I was going to promote them heavily during my talk because I like them and because their service is amazing. So if you have questions, by the way, uh, after this talk, they're in the back and they would be happy to talk to you about their platform. But I, I will tell you, yeah, just raise your hands, guys. Okay. Okay. Um, Bottom line is, it's a really solid platform, it's stable, it's secure, and it's very, very hard to mess up. And so, for that reason, you know, Cliff was able to help us spin up 48 websites like that. We were able to get themes on them quickly. Uh, they use all the studio, all the best, I should say, all the best Studio Press Genesis themes, not all of them, because not all of them are up to, up to standard, apparently. Some standard, I don't know who's standard. Um, I'm just saying. And, um, and a lot of really, really good plugins, a lot of premium plugins that everyone also covers the licenses for, which is nice to be a part of the platform. So um, I won't beat on that drum too much, but the bottom line is we need a really, really good platform that we can trust and use. So I know what you're thinking. Why not just use Themeforest? That's what everyone's thinking, right? <laughs> right? Because everybody loves Themeforest. Just, just shake your head. Shake your head in silence. No, bro. Yeah, right. So the thing about Theme Forest is they have pretty designs. But it looks pretty designed. <laughs> and scary too. <laughs> it's just for the novice. Yes. What is the Theme Forest? So Theme Forest is a fun marketplace where you can go and shop and buy premium themes, and they look spectacular. <laughs> and they promise to do everything. <laughs> And the code is scary. And uh, so, so for those of you that, that are not super into WordPress, just be aware of that and, and really vet the themes before you, you go after them. I mean, honestly, theme, not, and I'm, I'm kind of dogging on theme force because it's kind of the most common example that we all sort of struggle with. But there's a whole lot of themes out there that are premium themes that are just a little scary. So read your reviews. Find out who the theme authors are. Are they any good? Do they, do they build more than one theme? Is the theme being used more than 20 times? I mean, like, it's like that with plugins, too. Like, I was looking at plugins last week, and I was trying to solve, like, a very specific problem with plugins. And I'm looking through the repo, and I'm like, oh, oh, there's a plugin that'll do it. Oh, good, it has 20 installs. Next? That's terrifying. Like, there's a plugin with 20 installs. Just keep running. Run as fast as you can. Like, you don't want to be an early adopter when it comes to this stuff, I don't think. I don't know. That's just me. It's scary. So, um, so yeah, vet your theme, vet your plugins, because otherwise, and, and the other thing about a closed system uh, with Evermore, the nice thing about it is it's a, it was a closed system, right? So we needed a system where everybody could just go, oh, 
I have this idea. Let me just go find this plugin. And let me go to this. And then they, they add like 45 different plugins that don't work well together. And they're all in queuing jQuery, which is lots of fun. And you know, and then they just break. It's just, it's <laughs> terror, sheer terror. So we needed an environment where they could not do that. We had to lock people down. Um, I don't like locking people down necessarily, but that's the only way to ensure quality is to lock people down. And that's what we had to do in this particular situation. So. Um, a couple of other things on themes, so, so while we're kind of on that subject, um, I'm a big fan of Genesis themes. I think they're really good. I think they're well coded. I think they're well maintained and well supported. There's a lot of documentation around them. Um, I'm also a big fan of uh, elegant themes. So uh, my business partner in the back did a whole talk on Divi yesterday. We use Divi a lot in, in our company to build lots of really nice websites for, for kind of our, our clients that don't have huge budgets. So themes are great, but just picking the right ones are important. So that those talk to people here. There's a whole ton of themes out there that are really solid and great that I know nothing about. So just because it's not super popular doesn't mean that it's not good. It just means that you have to really vet it well, right? So we doing okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Just making. I don't know if he's like sneaking up to like reach in my back pocket and turn on my mic or something. That'd be really awkward. Uh, another thing to consider are plugins. So plugins that we used that were particularly helpful during the process. Uh, we're a big fan of Gravity Forms. So Gravity Forms is a really good forms plugin. Ninja Forms is also a good forms plugin. We kind of always use Gravity Forms. It works really well for us. And it does a whole lot more than just build forms. You can use it to, I mean, you can use it to create multi-site instances, and users, and all kinds of other crazy stuff, which is really great. Uh, another great plugin, Modern Tribes Events Calendar Pro. So you need a calendar. Some advanced calendar functionality. Advanced calendar pro is really great for nonprofits. Also, Design Palette Pro. Um, I will say this with a caveat. So, Design Palette Pro gives you a lot of really cool ability to customize and make things look good. And, and for us in this room, that's really great because we can make things look fantastic. The flip side of that is that if your client has the same access, they can make things look fantastic. <laughs> So you need to be careful about that because when they have access to that sort of stuff, things get really ugly really fast. So just be, be aware. Oh, look, I lost my PowerPoint again. Yeah, that's fun. Okay. Um, so we'll get to take away a minute. Also, the Yoast SEO plugin, and pretty much all the Yoast plugins for SEO are good. Yeah, and for analytics, um, I like these plugins a lot. They work well. He's got a local SEO plugin. He's got a video SEO plugin. I think it's premium. There's a lot of good options for that. Yoast SEO is a Y-O-A-S-T, I believe. Uh, Yoast SEO plugin is really good. Also, Psychic, which is kind of like a kind of like a digital guide. You can sort of say, hey, I want to do this in WordPress. And it'll say, OK, click here, and then click here, and then click here. It's, it's great, especially for like when you're turning over the site to a novice that really doesn't know anything about WordPress. They can look it up in Sidekick, and Sidekick can guide them step by step through the process of how to do what it is they want to do, which is really nice. Uh, and another one that's great is WP 101, which are training videos that will also walk them through how to do things. I'm a big fan of handing users tools and saying, here's a whole slew of videos on how to do everything you want to do with WordPress. Go learn. Have fun. Yeah, what was the yeah. uh, WP 101. So otherwise, um, they will call you over and over and over again, and they will email. WP 101 fixes that for you. So I would, I would strongly recommend that. So that was it. Good themes, good plugins, closed environment was huge. So now for takeaways, and there were quite a few takeaways. Um, we kind of have the same pain points with the nonprofits that at Sideways A we tend to have with our clients, which is not too surprising because people are people. Websites are websites, and expectations are always outrageous. So, uh, so the first thing that we learned that, that I wanted to mention is that the content is always a monster. It's just the worst part of every project. Like it always is, it always will be. There's no way around it. I had one client one time that waited for two and a half years to give us content for their website. So I'm not going to tell you what type of company they were. It does make it funnier, but it's sort of you can figure out who it was. So, but. All the same, two and a half years is the longest I've waited, and I wish I could say that only happened once, but it happened at least twice. So 
There you go. Content's always a monster. So what we learned is, uh, basically, it needs to be all done up front in WordPress. And so for our clients at Sideways 8, we've done that by creating a, basically a blank WordPress multi-site install. And it's running like 2010 or 2015 or whatever the most recent one is. And so obviously not 2010, because I clearly don't know how to count. And um, essentially, we build out all the pages very quickly for the client, just blank pages, and we say, hey, client, here's the username, here's the password, here are all the blank pages, here's how you edit those pages, go put in your content and have fun. It'll be glorious. And they go in and they put in their content, and it works out pretty well, we give them feedback along the way. And then when we to build the site, we just do a little export and a little import, and it's all done. It's great. We did not do that for 48 and 48 for reasons that I still do not understand. I think I was really busy doing other stuff and didn't think, hey, this thing that works really well at Sideways 8, we should do here at 48 and 48. I don't know, just didn't put two and two together. So we didn't do that, and content was a big issue because of that. Uh, we limited content to 10 pages, which was a bad idea, because then clients, they need more than 10 pages, so they need like 50 pages. So now they're calling Evermore and saying, hey, how do we add more pages? And help us add pages. All that kind of stuff, which was unnecessary, we could just have them load it all to begin with. So uh, the big thing about content, the big takeaway is have it all done up front and make sure the client can build all the content on their own until their heart's content. And then lock them in and tell them they can't touch it again until after the project is finished. Which is what we'll be doing this year. And it will be beautiful. Any questions about the content capture Sunday? Because it's kind of a I'll take mid mid talk questions. <laughs> no? Right. It's fun. It works out really well. Well, like they're well. adding content, or are they adding after the site is launched? They're adding it to the. You know. No, they add it all in a blank WordPress install before they ever even see a designed site, and then we take all that, right. put it right. into the dev site, build the site, and pretty it up. Here you go. All done. Yes. That's assuming they know how to work with the WordPress. I'll see, I teach them that part. That, that, I've got training videos specifically for that one thing. And that's easy to do. Just create a quick screen capture. It's 10 minutes long, maybe. And good to go. So you say, here, watch this screen capture. Here's the login. Go put your content in. That, that's a great idea because it gives them a little confidence beforehand. Well, they're going to have to learn WordPress anyway. Might as well do it on the front end rather than the back end. The images are there, too. Mm -hmm. They're uploading. Images so and everything. If you don't do that, you've got all this, like, they can't find the Dropbox file. They can't do the exactly. pictures or somewhere else. The other nice thing is you can leave comments on on the pages, oh, and then you can gosh. dialogue about the page and the comments and how it's going to work and all that sort of stuff, and you have a nice quick record of everything. Did you make so. that up? Uh, no, I stole that idea from, I, I want to say it was from Green Mellon. Let me give that cut, give credit to Mickey Mellon on that one. I'm pretty sure. So you can thank Mickey Mellon later. Look, he's not in here, but he's so. Uh, yes. You said you do a blank install. Is it done on a subdomain, or how do you do that? We have a uh, we have a, a a dedicated domain for it uh, okay, for so our content lines. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, all right, that's content. Oh, lost my signal again. Sorry about that. Next, set expectations early and often. So I should, I should know this from having worked with clients for eight years or so, that you essentially agree with a client that you're going to build a building and they expect you to build a city, right? That's always the case. It's going to be five pages. If you pages later, you're having conversations about scope creep, right? I mean, that's just, that's the nature of it. And it doesn't change just because you're talking about something given away to a nonprofit either. Right? Nonprofits have the same level of expectations and perhaps higher level of expectations than normal clients do because they get given a lot of stuff. I understand that. I get why they're that way. I've run many nonprofits. I run a nonprofit now because 4848 now it's a nonprofit. So I get that. We don't like to pay for stuff. Nonprofits don't like to pay for stuff. I know that going in. But setting expectations and then coming back over and over and over and over again is critical. And it's, and it's critical, too, to come back not only to the expectations in in terms of saying it, but, but how you communicate it. So make sure you email them letting them know what the expectations are. Make sure you verbally communicate it letting them know what the expectations are. And over and over and over again, when this project is complete, you will have a website. It will have 25 pages. It will have these plugins. It will have support for X amount of time. And then you're good to go. 
You mean to say that people tend to hear only what they want to hear? Surprisingly, yes. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? They always hear what they want to hear. And, and so we have to constantly and continuously reiterate to our clients what it is we're doing, what it is we've agreed to, why we're doing what we're doing, and how we're doing what we're doing. And so for 48 and 48, that's a huge thing. Yes. What about setting up some sort of formal contract or, you know, I mean, when they redundantly say, push the envelope, say, here, this is what you signed, this is what we agreed Absolutely. to? Absolutely. Yeah, having a, so having a statement of work uh, for things like this is critical. The problem with the statement of work is that they, they still only hear what they want to hear, and so you've got to still come back to them over and over and over. <coughs> They used to work for that for profit. They had a consecutive intent that maybe you didn't think about it for your team, you didn't think about it. Did not profit. In other words, in other words, you're talking about a user that kind of didn't have all the expectation. Right. But if they were give and take, and they were sometimes not the profit, right. the kid didn't have a good idea. Well, there is. is their give and take with the nonprofit. So my answer for both for 4848 and as an agency owner is yes, but only up front. So, uh, that, and that was actually ultimately the problem that we ran to with 4848 is we sort of had this sort of semi-lockdown, here's what you're gonna get, but it wasn't fully locked down. And so it wasn't locked down up front. And so then they're like, oh, we need this, and this, and we need this, and we need this, and we need this. You know, and, and, uh, and to, you know, Evermore is really taking more of the brunt of that than, uh, or actually the full brunt, and not more of the brunt, the entire brunt of that, uh, for my mistake on that. So the thing is, is you have to lock it down early, and you have to read it right off. There can be give and take, but only up Otherwise, it just spits out of control. One thing I found, they wanted, they needed so many things, like they need membership. Um, e-commerce, they, you know, they need more than, than the usual small business website. So, and Evermore had all of that available all built boom, plug in, boom, plug in, boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, we, we got, it was pretty interesting, so we got a group of plugin developers together before the event to think through, like, are there any plugins that we should, we should write for a nonprofit during the event? There's like some hardcore developers here, and they just, you know, they want to be able to come in and write some code. And, and it was you know, basically what it boiled down to is with the plugins that Evermore had, we could just figure out ways to do it without writing code. You know, so, okay, that worked out well. <laughs> I mean, maybe not if they wanted to write code, but it worked out well for me for providing good solutions for the nonprofits. So, and then the, the, the last big takeaway was plan the path, replan, and reiterate, right? So, I mean, the plan in the past is that, that up front. Make sure you have the details up front. Make sure you've got really solid discovery and you understand the needs of the client. That's what we definitely need to do. It's hard to do that at scale for 48 nonprofits, but it's absolutely essential because there has to be a solid plan for what their website needs are. If we just can't fly by the seat of our pants. I mean, it's like Judy said, some of them need a calendar, some of them need membership, some of them need private pages or, or some kind of super simplified membership. Some of them need donations, but they need donations to five different kinds of gateways, not just one. Nonprofits generally aren't using Stripe to process their donations. You know, like they just, it's just all kinds of stuff. And we really have to understand their needs, make a plan for their needs. And then as we move forward, we've got to be going to iterate that plan. And it's like that in every project, right? There's never a project that where the discovery is absolutely perfect. You get it as locked in as you can, like I said, up front, and then you have to figure out the nuances of it as you go through it and communicate really, really well with the clients. So moving forward, the way we do that with 4848 is we'll be having solid project managers that are working with the nonprofits very early in the process. We start the process much earlier than we did last time and be sure that there's a solid time for discovery, for uh, exploration, explanation, and really locking in everything that they need so that at the end of the day we can say to each of the 48 nonprofits, okay, you need a website, you need step 25 pages, it's gotta have a calendar, it's gotta have memberships, it's gotta have payments given to this gateway for this purpose, it's gotta have a call to action for this, you need these types of donations, you know, and just a really good solid list of things that they need so that when it comes time to build the sites in 48 hours, we know what we need to do. Right? So that's the that's the big the big thing there. 
bottom line, uh, as far as my, what I kind of took away from the whole thing is that WordPress is an amazing platform for building really cool stuff in Dreamfig. I mean, 10 years ago, who would have thought you could build 48 websites in 48 hours? Right? I mean, five years ago, who would have thought you could build 48 websites? I mean, you could do it two years ago. We did it one year ago. So, you know, like, it, it, I mean, it's a great platform, it's a great foundation, and it does a lot more, and it's a lot more capable than what I think we give it credit for, right? I mean, the fact that, that Evermore was able to come up with this closed system and say, oh, you need 50 sites? Okay, give me 10 minutes, and I'll, I'll get your 50 sites created. Maybe it's three minutes. How, how long does it take to create 50 sites, Cliff? Yeah. On Evermore? Uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I'm sorry. Give them 30 seconds and he can have 50 sites spun up for you. I mean, they're, they're, they'll all be the same look and feel. We've got to build them out and make them pretty. But <laughs> nonetheless, 50 sites. So in 30 seconds. I mean, that's, that's the power of WordPress. It's fantastic. So. And any questions? I have no idea how I'm doing on time. Oh, look, 30 minutes. We're on the dot. Yes. How did you select your nonprofits? Great question. So nonprofits signed up on our website and gave a pretty detailed amount of information. There were just a handful of criteria that essentially filtered out nonprofits. So, ideally, this was not true for all of them. Ideally, we wanted them to have one full time employee. That was for the purpose of making sure they were nonprofits that were moving the ball forward. For nonprofits, when they don't have a full time employee, sometimes it's kind of a part time sort of hobby. So, we wanted to make sure to eliminate those. We did do several websites for nonprofits that did not have a full time employee, but that was sort of one of the criteria. Um, secondly, we asked that they had committed some funds for after the event for getting live support, any of those types of things. Thirdly, uh, they could not be religious or political in nature. So uh, a soup kitchen based out of the church was, was fine uh, because they're serving like food, but we weren't going to do like church, synagogue, mosque, websites, for example, because that would be super awkward for somebody. Um, and then political, <laughs> same thing, you know. Have something on the website that for a politician they don't agree with. That's super awkward. So we we'll went that. Um, so after that, they met those criteria, they submitted everything. We had a team that made sure they were 501c3, actual nonprofits, and kind of vet them a little further. And then that team made selections, basically just looking for the most diverse group of nonprofits that served the Metro Atlanta area that we could find. So they did have to serve the Metro Atlanta area. They did not have to be headquartered necessarily in, in Metro Atlanta, but had to serve Metro Atlanta. And, uh, and that team came up with a list of 48. We did have a couple that dropped last minute because they were, they were a pretty rigorous process of getting us content and filling out like, all kinds of really in-depth questionnaires. So we had each nonprofit fill out an in-depth um, branding and or branding questionnaire so we really understood who they were. Where we basically, it was glorious. We basically asked them the same question over and over again, which is what branding is. And you say, hey, what do you do? Give me a page. And then they give you a page, and you say, hey, what do you do? Give me a half a page, they give you a half a page. And hey, what do you do? Give me three sentences, two sentences, <laughs> one sentence, five words. And by the time they get down to five words, you actually know what they do. It's glorious. So uh, it's a little more in-depth than that. But we had them do that. We had them do a website design questionnaire as well. And then we had them do all kinds of content. Like, work also. So it's like eight to 15 hours worth of work on their part. So some of the nonprofits just couldn't handle that. And they went out there. And what about a couple minutes more? Yes? Um, you're moving to the blank teams this year. No, uh, we're still going to have to have the questionnaire up front to do to do really a full discovery and a full brand analysis of each nonprofit. Um, they will be. So there were three steps. One step was uh, brand analysis and discovery. Second step was website analysis and discovery. And third step was hey, put all your content in this way. We're just changing the third step for that. Yeah. Uh, still the requirements is that. Mm -hmm. That was the idea, but it's flexible. So that, yeah, that's a, it's it's not a hard and fast rule. It's a desire. There were about I want to say there were five to seven that did not have a full time employee that got in. Yes. Two questions. Uh huh. First off, could you repost your contact info up there? Sure. That was awesome. And second of all, was it just the two of you doing all of this, or was it like? Did you have 48 oh, no. developers helping? I'm sorry. I, I, I should have been more clear about that. We had, a, we, had a huge, we had a huge team of people. So I tell you what, if you were there at 48 and 48, raise your hand. So this is some of the team. 
Um, there were a lot of people there. I, I should have made that super clear. I meant to like really emphasize that. So um, we put out the call to developers, designers, <coughs> WordPress people. Originally, we were thinking we needed a lot of developers until I finally listened to Cliff, and then I realized we needed WordPress people and digital marketers more so. So we moved our thinking and started shifting in that direction. I think we had about 150 volunteers over the course of the weekend um, from all over the place. I mean, we had a bunch of volunteers from uh, large agencies like Moxie. We had uh, a bunch of volunteers that just you know work for themselves. We had one volunteer who was hilarious, or not hilarious, it was great. So he lived across the street. We had the event at Pont City Market in General Assembly, which is a fantastic space. And this guy lived across the street. It was Saturday night. He was watching the news, and the news did like a 10-second, 15-second blurb. Pont City Market tonight, building 48 websites for 48 nonprofits in 48 hours. And, and that was it. It was like this little, I mean, 10, 15-second blurb, and this guy heard about it, came across the street, found us, and volunteered for the next like 15 hours helping us build websites, and he was a rock star. It was fantastic. And so, I was, I mean, he happened to, I mean, he, he knew WordPress. He was like some CTO of some, you know, e-commerce <coughs> company or something. So, it was amazing. Yes? Uh, for me, it was great because we walked in and you had all those things on the wall that you could pick, and nobody knew anybody. I mean, you knew people, but you right. just put your name down, mm -hmm. and then you got this crew, like some reality TV show, you got a great designer I never laid eyes on before. Right. A fantastic programmer, but didn't know WordPress. Right. And so the three of us were just like, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some really neat connections that happened through the event. Uh, just, I mean, just like what Judy said. And, uh, and having people there that knew WordPress combined with people there that didn't know WordPress really was kind of a cool and unique yeah, thing as well. Yeah, the programmer was like, I went out to talk to Cliff about something at one point. He was running out going, I, I need to be able to get the code. I have to fix the, the navigation. It's in the wrong place. I said, oh, go to appearance menu and pick primary menu. Right. right. Secondary <laughs> menu. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Um, forgive me, I came in late, so you might have already answered this. Okay. But uh, I've looked at every more before. Mm -hmm. The cost is prohibitive. Okay. So for the not, did you get a different price? Because mm -hmm. so No, we, we, uh, we helped offset some of the upfront costs. Um, with them, so we, we helped some of the nonprofits upset some, up, up, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, and, and Evermore did, they were sponsors, so they worked with us some too, I guess. So I guess, in a sense, uh, but ultimately they gave away uh, six months free to the nonprofits, and then the nonprofits at that point pay monthly, I mean, just like an Evermore customer should. And that was known to the nonprofits up front. We were actually really clear, like, hey, look, you don't have to stay on Evermore because we weren't going to lock them in. Actually, Evermore doesn't lock anybody in anyway, which is actually one of the beauties of their service is the fact that you can build this site in this super closed, super safe environment, and then if the client outgrows it, you just ask for their files, they give you the files, and they can go somewhere else. And so the nonprofits weren't locked in, but they were strongly advised to stay because, I mean, if they go to some other cheap hosting, they're just going to get hacked. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, really, when you think about it, um, if it's 50 bucks, so many of the nonprofits come back to me after they've been hacked mm -hmm. and are willing to have somebody who can be their technical person, mm -hmm. give them a little extra care along the way. And they yep. get tons of that with, with Evermore. They yep. need somebody. Yeah, a maintained platform is going to be cheaper in the long run. Like 50 bucks a month sounds like a ton, I get it. But after the site's hacked and you have to pay somebody to unhack the site, and then, I mean, there's all kinds of problems that flow from that. It, you're just, you're, I mean, you're always going to end up paying for so, something somewhere. So, I mean, to me, it's have a good platform. Start with, I mean, it doesn't have to be necessarily Evermore. I like Evermore a lot. I'm a big fan. You can tell. But, I mean, there's lots of good platforms out there that are worth paying for, is all I'm trying to say. Are you saying that nonprofits are more exposed to hacking, or you just mean hacking in general? I just mean if, just the way it's, oh. if if you go out there and find the absolute dirt cheapest hosting and put WordPress on it, and don't update it, and don't yeah. update it because they never do. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Think about Apple. Yeah. Think about Apple. They have a closed system. They don't have a lot of viruses. Think about right. I mean, I I guess what I'm getting at is, if you're using WordPress, use good WordPress. Focused hosting. I think most of the hosting companies here. I'm not. I don't. I would never speak against a sponsor. So I think most of the most of the hosting companies here that I'm aware of have that option. It's a good option. Yes. So for the team, 
Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, there, we had to tell the nonprofits no uh, about lots of things, or I mean, in general. I mean, that, that's like those everything. Oh, yeah, you might have to ask April that. I, I don't, because I think they had a lot of requests after the event. So April can probably tell you some some fun stories afterwards better than I could. Uh, I mean, we facilitated the event, and we sort of handed it off to Evermore, knowing that they have amazing support, and so the clients have been, or the, the nonprofits, I should say, have been well taken care of. But I think that means they get more of funny and horror stories than I do. So, yes? Uh, you have an example of before and after how they Why didn't I think about doing that? <laughs> Good grief. I I don't know. I mean, it would take me a, a yeah, two more. Yeah, I mean, I've got, uh, there, are, there are several really good after sites, but the, I don't have them before. Yeah, I, 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 I'll have to, I'll try to, yeah, I'll, well, I've got, I've got screenshots. I'll try to post something on Twitter later today, and, uh, and I'll tag WCATL and put a picture up. They were awful. Yeah, <laughs> they were awful, basically, yeah. Yes. Made them re-put it in there, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... It's, it's my experience from Sideways 8 and from 4848 that anytime you say to a client, like, hey, you have this whole website, it's got 20 pages, are you, are you gonna use that content for your new site? They go, oh yeah, we're gonna use some of it, but then we're gonna write new stuff. No, they're not, they're not gonna write, they just wanna write new stuff, but they're not going to, they're just gonna pretend they're going to and think about it, and then they're gonna get writer's block, and you know, then they're not gonna do it. So, I, it, yeah, everybody always says they wanna write new content. They never, they never actually do it. They just say they want to. Yes. Besides, <coughs> excuse me. Besides content being king, uh, uh, actually design where things are placed, how they are, the UX, the aesthetic mm -hmm. is also key. Oh yeah. But you're, but you're in a time crunch. How much did you do any like pre prep to decide? Okay, this is how we're going to do it, or we just handed it to somebody and said, okay, this is the content. You know. So how, what was that kind great of great question. Um, the question was. Essentially, how did we make sure it was good design, right? How did, how did we make sure it told the story well? So we designed the uh, design and branding questionnaires and website design questionnaires in such a way that it sort of fleshed out what the story was that they were actually trying to tell. So the first step that each of our teams did, or was supposed to do anyway, was to go through those documents in great detail and then have a conversation with the nonprofit. So typically a 30-minute conversation with the nonprofit to ask clarifying questions and really understand what their needs were and then come up with a strategy based on that and begin building the page. Now, then we had several people that were following up on that after the fact and saying, and kind of looking at the sites and going, okay, this is pretty good and we see how this is telling the story, but have you thought of this and let's do this and let's do this. And there were, I mean, a handful of sites that just needed some extra touch up work. Um, so there was towards a lot the of groundwork before the, the clock started ticking. There was a lot of information gathering before the clock started ticking. The actual dissemination of that information and creating a strategy happened at 48 and 48 itself. Now, we'll probably do a little bit more of that pre-work this time around, but we'll see. Yeah? Will the pre-work this next time help you in the styles or I don't know. I haven't thought about that. If you have some ideas, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, we'll talk afterwards. It'd be great. Yes? Can you talk more about <clears throat> how you found and vetted sponsors and where their sponsorship been? Right. How do we find and vet sponsors? So one of the nice things about partnering with somebody that knows everybody in Metro Atlanta is that he went and got sponsors and I didn't have to worry about it. Uh, so, I mean, essentially we, we just called a lot of people that we knew well, uh, I mean, around town and asked for help. We got a lot of sponsors, a lot of in-kind donations. So that was a big part of it. So like Red Bull, brought out their gaming center that nobody at the event used, which was, I thought, <laughs> odd. Uh, I mean, it was like free, it's free video games. Take a break, play some video games, and nobody played. But like my eight-year-old, he was all about it when he came to visit. So that was cool. Um, you know, we, we got a lot of product sponsored. Moe's, uh, you know, uh, Jeff had a contact at Moe's. They catered this just, this meal that was so enormous. Like, you wouldn't believe it. Like, I, I think we took more than half of the meal and actually ended up donating it. Uh, to another nonprofit in, in the city that feeds a lot of people. And they were just so overwhelmed to have what was left from that meal, it was amazing. So um, I think Twitter did some cool stuff. They bought breakfast for all of our volunteers and gave us a, a, a tour around their facility. Um, I mean, so essentially we just called and asked a whole lot of people. And it's such a, I mean, 
the interesting thing is you, you can always get more sponsors for crazy ideas, right? So I mean, if you say like, hey, I want to do you know, this thing and it's sort of been done, and, and, and it's a great cause, but it's been done, then sponsors are a little more reluctant, I think, when you just say like, hey, I want to build 48 websites in a weekend, they're like, oh, we want to sponsor that for sure. I don't know, it's weird. Um, so we just asked a ton of people and, and got a lot of support, and we're continuing to get a lot of support uh, as we move into this year. So this year, moving forward, uh, just so everybody knows, we're gonna do another 48 and 48 here in Atlanta in the fall, but it's gonna be in October. Uh, you can sign up to get on our mailing list at 48 and 48.com. <coughs> make sure it's back up on the screen. We're also gonna go to New York and uh, do an event there, and then moving into 2017, we're going to try to go into some more cities. So if anybody has any contacts in New York, I'd love to, to get to know them. We're looking for connections with sponsors, agencies, WordPress professionals uh, in, in New York City. And then obviously we're going to need a lot of help here as well. So we'd love to have anybody there. Yes? I would love to say that we did. <laughs> <laughs> I would also love to say that we vetted developers, um, but we th there was no good way to do it. Uh, we're gonna we're, we're we're working with some ideas on that this time around. We had a team of people that were sort of saving the day in certain aspects. Uh, Brett was on that team, I believe. You, you can wave your hand there, Brett. Um, yeah, Brett, and I think Cliff saved quite a few things, and, and I know Judy saved quite a few, and I think there's probably a few more people in the room that did as well. Um, there, we just had to have a lot of follow-up and a lot of interaction among different teams because it became pretty obvious as, it, as everything went forward which teams were struggling more than others. And we were obviously also reviewing the, the staging sites real time, so it was pretty obvious to me, and I was highlighting the ones that needed some additional assistance from a design perspective and the ones that did not. Um, now the bigger problem really was vetting like some of the CSS that got written because there was there was some CSS that got written uh, during the event, and while it was good on desktop, it was not always good responsibly, and that caused trouble down the road. So we're going to be figuring out how to not run into that issue this time. So, uh, it was written in like some CSS editors, editor plugins, or things like that. And probably some in line too, I would say. Oh, yeah, good. Do you have success metrics? How many people ever more is retained since you started? You can ask April that. She would know better than I would. So. We did not do a good job of getting good analytics data beforehand because there, I just missed it completely. So. I think we have some data on some improvement that's happened and some more interaction that's happened, but not the data that we should. So the next two events will make, be making sure we have really solid data up front and afterwards, and we'll make sure we have a more smooth process for getting the sites live much more quickly. So, good question. So really see the follow-up success stories from our There have been several, and uh, we need to showcase them on like, some videos and stuff. So that's a really good idea. Yes? What about using Bootstrap? I'm sorry? Bootstrap for your mobile for the CSS. Right. Um, so I think, well, we use Genesis theme. I think Evermore primarily has Genesis themes, and it's built on, is it built on Bootstrap? What, what are Genesis themes built on? Their own CSS. They're, no, they're their own. Okay. So they're, they are, the themes themselves were mobile responsive to begin with. Mm -hmm. The problem was the CSS that was written to override the theme CSS was not always. Any other questions? Yep. Your um, giveaways were Ah, uh, yeah, well, so I, I, didn't, I should mention the giveaways. So we gave away devices uh, of all kinds every three hours? Every, four. every four, four hours. Every four hours, 24 seven for the whole 48 hours. So it was great because uh, it kept people engaged the whole time and, and kept at least some of them on site. So we had phone, we had Samsung phones, Samsung tablets, Chromebooks, I want to say something else. Uh, we have one thing that was like a hybrid smartphone point and shoot camera. It was like the weirdest thing ever. It was amazing. Um, it was really so. It was really fun. Every four hours, we'd like gather in. We everybody grab grab a raffle ticket and we raffle <coughs> off these items, and, and it was it was a blast. So that was great. Yes. Was one of the 
No, they were not. Um, we were concerned if they were on site that we would never finish the project. <laughs> I really wanted them to be on site because I wanted that level of collaboration, but I, it just it wouldn't happen, you know? So I, we, yeah. I, yeah. We, I, a few of them showed up on the last day. Yeah, a few of them showed up on announced, <laughs> which is great. But, yeah, yeah, we did have them on the phone. So there was collaboration, right. But it was if they were looking over the team's shoulder, it just it would have been bad. So I, we're, I'd like to find a way to loop them in even more into the actual event itself. I, I just I don't know if there is a way yet. I'm thinking about Maybe it. Maybe they could just you could have a video camera. So like a live feed, they're like in a, they're like right. in an offsite <laughs> room. <laughs> it's a live feed of a bunch of people doing this, you know. <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. Yes. Is the forty eight is forty eight is it a nonprofit? Yes. Yeah, so 48, we, we've incorporated. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. Yeah, I said that right. Um, and uh, with the purpose of helping other nonprofits, that's our goal. So we want to help other nonprofits essentially with their marketing, digital marketing needs. Oh, he's still back. I mean, how many of the behind Well, so far we've got uh, a board and an executive director, and that's it. So whether or not we expand beyond that. No, not yet. Uh, we haven't given, I haven't thought about that, but that's a good idea. I'll have to think about that. So that's a, yeah, a board and an exec director, who is fantastic, and not me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. All right. Is that it? All right. Well, thanks for Thank listening. You.